Hi there guys, uh, just a quick sort of what we're at today. Um, I'm in the process of changing the rear brake pads on my Ducati, uh, getting that ready for its MOT. Uh, as you can see the caliper's off, now I'll just sort of show you the whole setup from around here. You've got uh, your wheel and single sided swing arm obviously, so everything's on one side, all your brake disc and your, uh, your chain and sprocket and so on. So the caliper sits under here. Now you can take your wheel off giving you much better access all round um, to get to everything but uh, it's quite possible to change the pads in situ. Now I've ended up taking off the caliper which are just two 13mm bolts incidentally because I had some problems getting the pistons driven back into the housing. Um, now that's rectified and the pistons are back where they should be Basically I was pushing one and it was pushing the other out and I think they'd kind of both just gone past that point of no return a bit. I'll show you the pads and you'll be able to see why. Now I'm not a big user of the back brake myself um, and as a result I didn't check this as scrupulously as I really ought to have like I did the front but these are the old pads. Now you can see one of them still has a little bit of meat left on it although not much and the other one is almost down to the metal. Now just just as a comparison I'm going to show you the new ones. Now these are the new ones. Let's try and stand them up. It's quite tricky but I can do that and you can see just what a difference there is there. I say there's a tiny bit of meat on one but uh, they're both way below the recommended limit. Basically when the pad thickness gets below 2mm it's recommended you change them. So you can see they're well below and I think this one particularly had uh, allowed the piston to push itself out so much it had kind of gone past that point of no return where you push one and it was it was just uh, pushing the other because it was easier than pushing the fluid back up through the pipe. So what I had to do is kind of uh, get the caliper off and um, wedge in a couple of the old pads and one of the new pads uh, press one of the pistons right back and then just using two screwdrivers um, and propping the caliper up here I was kind of wriggle it back until both pistons as you can see have been uh, driven back inside the bore where they need to be to allow me room. Uh, what I've then done is um, given everything a good clean and I've just used some, some old petrol uh, which I keep in a can in the shed for this kind of thing um, um, and an old paintbrush, giving it a good scrub with that uh, gotten the worst of the rubbish off and especially down the channels because one of the pads also wasn't retracting fully which which would also explain why that piston's been stuck out a little while instead of returning back in as it should be doing under the pressure of the pad um, and causing it to bind a little bit on top of that you see so uh, a good clean, a good clean of the channels and I made sure that both, both the new pads fit in and slide freely back and forth. Then obviously they'll be getting greased up on the backs with copper grease and just on the, the runner channels at the side to make sure that they move freely um, in future. And then it's just a case of slipping them back in and I'll come back when I, when I get to putting the pads in. Okay, here we are at the moment. The caliper's bolted back on and in place. So it sits there upside down as you can see. Now this screwdriver is currently there holding the pads in place which have been greased and slipped in which can both move freely, it's a good thing. The, um, <coughs> the retaining spring is here. Now this fits that way up and you can see the hump in the middle of it and that's where the retaining pin this bit here passes through. It's got a split pin on one side which wedges it in on one side and it's got a little clip kicking around somewhere down here like a little e-clip. Um, there we go. Which clips into the groove at the end as it protrudes from this side. As I said the screwdriver is just holding that in place until I get the pin in. Um, so uh, and that's really all there is to it. Once that's in place, pump the pedal a few times, make sure the pads seat and release, make sure they're not they're not gripping and binding, and you're good to go. And then it's a case of take it easy for the first hundred miles or so to bed in the new pads. Right, so there's the whole thing back together. There's the retaining pin, the anti-rattle spring, the new pads, everything's coated. I've just pumped up the brake pedal, so I've got a nice firm pedal. And um, 
unfortunately it's kind of tricky to rotate and brake at the same time you can see that's uh, that's now braking and releasing quite nicely <coughs> and to give uh, with a clean rag the brake disc a little a quick wipe over with some of the petrol um, and blow that clean just to just to make sure that that's that's nice and clean and doing its job so we've got uh, the brand new pads in there that should uh, once bedded in they should last a, a good little while uh, one thing I forgot to mention the anti rattle spring has a direction arrow on um, and it's it's not glaringly obvious uh, even once cleaned up <coughs> but um, once I checked this <coughs> I realised I'd fitted it and it didn't look quite right before. I took it out and it. It's got a direction arrow which goes in the direction of rotation of the disc, which means that the bit that sits outside the caliper goes opposite the bleed nipple and the feed uh, banjo bolt up here. So, uh, in summary, to just replace the pad, you can leave the whole thing in situ, take off the little e clip push the pin out, drift it out, give that a clean with some emery paper and grease it up for refitting, take the pin, uh, the anti-rattle spring out and give it a good clean, pull the pads out, press the pistons back, new pads in with some copper grease on, anti-rattle spring back in, retaining pin back in, you'll have to tap it in from this side because it's got a little circlet which locks it in place on that side and refit the e-spring, bump up the pedal and top up the fluid if necessary and away you go. Okay I hope this has been useful.